guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about should you get a medical coding certification when you have the RHIA or the RHIT? If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so I have discussed this particular question several times already um, on my channel. <laughs> um, however, I'm getting chased across multiple uh, social media platforms by one person asking this very question. So I'm gonna do a whole new video on it, <laughs> saying the same thing that I've said previously, and we're just gonna go over it again, so hopefully we can get this put to bed. All right, so here we go. All right, first things first. What is the RHIA? What is the RHIT? The RHIA is a Registered Health Information Administrator. This person has a bachelor's degree in health information management. The RHIT is a registered health information technician. This person has an associate's degree in uh, health information technology, okay? These uh, degree designations are for our leaders. These are the people who have these. It is designed for, it is designed for our leaders, our educators, um, coding compliance officers, auditors, that's what those degree designations are for because if you look at the syllabus of these degree programs, you will see that the majority and the concentration of those is about leadership. It is about the data analytics. It is about managing people. It is about managing organizations. That's what those degree designations are for. The coding portion of these degree programs is actually very small. It is very small, it's almost an afterthought. Because again, that is not what they are designed for. They are designed to be our leaders. Now somebody that wants to get into medical coding may have been sucked in to a program like that. Oh, yeah, you need to get your degree so that way you can become a coder. No, you can get a certification and become a coder and be just as successful um, as somebody who gets their degree and then has to go and get a medical coding certification to be in the door as a medical coder. So here's the thing, guys. If you are wanting to get into leadership, all right, and you say, well, do I need to get my medical coding certification? I would say yes, because you as the leader, that you are gonna be the person that is going to um, neutralize these disagreements between the, the lead or the auditor and the coder, okay? So you need to know um, what you're looking at, you really do need to understand the coding part. You really do need to understand those fundamentals and everything. And having and possessing a medical coding certification is going to go a long way into that. Now, which one would I recommend? I personally, for somebody who already has a degree, I would recommend going for the CCS only because that is the mastery of the medical coding credentials. Of all the four main medical coding certifications that are asked for, the CCS is the one that is the gold standard. <laughs> this is an industry thing, not, not just me. Okay, guys, when you look at what each one of these medical coding credentials covers, the CCS is the mastery of inpatient and outpatient coding. And as somebody who's in leadership, you want to make sure that you understand and you have that mastery skill of medical coding for inpatient or outpatient. So that way, if you're in a hospital, you're not just gonna say, well, I don't really know how to code in patients, so okay, whatever they say, it's fine. No, you need to make sure that you know everything. Being a good leader is somebody that is not just gonna look at what do my tasks entail. Your job as a leader in leadership is going to be, okay, this is all of my tasks that I'm supposed to be doing, plus I need to know what everybody else is doing so that I can spot really good talent so that I can spot things when they're wrong, so that I can correct things myself because you don't wanna always have to depend on other people. And other people who may be having set, having set have themselves set in their own ways and they know how to talk a good game and they know how to talk to the person who's in leadership with that RHIA or the RHIT and they're thinking, oh yeah, I can pull a fast one on them because they don't know. So whatever I say, they're gonna go along with, and that's not right. So you as a leader, if you have that RHIA or the RHIT, you need to arm yourself with a really good medical coding certification like the CCS. Now, 
if you want to go with AAPC and you say, oh, well, you know, I want to go with AAPC because they say that the, the test is easier, wrong, for, number one, the test is not easier, okay? It's going to take still some skill <laughs> for you to be able to pass this. And again, if you are, you know, needing to get certified for inpatient and outpatient with AAPC, you would have to get two different uh, credentials. Not only that, it would cost you more money as far as like the CEUs and things like that. So that's something that you really need to be mindful of. And again, you're already with a HEMA when you have the RHIA or the RHIT. So getting, you know, staying with them with your credentials is going to save you money in the long run. Plus with AAPC, you do have to pay that yearly membership fee um, to maintain and keep your credential. Okay, so that's just something that you ought to know. All right. In addition to the 36 continuing education units just for one certification they don't have a credential that says two things in one like the CCA and the CCS does with a HEMA theirs just says you know if you have the uh, CPC that that's outpatient if you have the CIC that's inpatient so again you'd have to carry the two and it's not about well you know um, it, this organization is better than that organization no it is the coder themselves that is going to make the whole difference right there. Because if the coder doesn't understand what they're doing, it doesn't matter if they're with a HEMA or with AAPC, they're just a bad coder, right? Uh, but if they do know what they're doing, you need to be able to know and recognize those things. And having a medical coding certification is going to help you to understand what your coders are looking at, okay? So that's why I would recommend somebody who has the RHIA or the RHIT. I will emphatically say it again, <laughs> again, again, again. Yes, you should get it. Again, because the degree designations are talking about leadership. And there's going to be people who always argue with me. Oh, no, in my hospital, we uh, have to have, everybody has to have a degree. No, that's not true. That's not true. Because if you look at the job listings, it says, yes, we want an RHIA or an RHIT. That's somebody who does not know anything about our industry. They're just looking at all the things that are out there. And, oh, yes, these people have their degree designations. So we want them. Right? Because they've been to college. Somebody who's been to college, what does this say? And they have their degree. This says that you can show up <laughs> to a place for two years or four years consistently you can follow through you can see something through to the end that takes discipline in order to be able to do that and that's why they're so willing to take on people who have their degrees right because they don't know people in the health information industry we know what those rhias and rhits are capable of but people who are in hr who have no idea what we're doing right they're the ones who says oh yeah okay well we see rhia rhit out there we'll go ahead and take them you know so that's the thing, guys. We have to keep an open mind when we get our credentials, but also you have to understand what each one of these credentials stands for. You know, I get a lot of people who comment and I'm just like, who are you listening to? Somebody was saying, oh, I want to know um, about taking the state boards for the RHIT. First of all, let's get this straight. There is no such thing as state boards, okay? First of all, it's that that has nothing to do with us. State boards has everything to do with like lawyers and doctors and nurses. They take state boards. They are state boarded by that particular state, right? We are not. When we get certified RHIA, RHIT, CCS, CCSP, CPC, each one of these designations comes from the national associations, the American Health Information Management Association or the American Academy of Professional Coders, okay? These are certifications. They're not licenses. They're not state board exams. So please stop saying it, guys, because that's showing that you don't know what you're talking about when you say things like that. Because there is a difference when it comes to state boards. And you don't wanna be running around saying, oh yeah, I'm taking my state boards. Oh, you're certified by the state of whatever, Nevada, New York, California, in medical coding? Somebody who knows would be like, that doesn't sound right at all. I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? But if you're saying, I'm certified as a medical coder, okay, which association are you certified with? AHEMA or AAPC? 
Now we're talking, okay? So you have to make sure that you're saying things properly. I know it's a lot. I know it's, gosh, there's so much with the associations and, you know, the, the credentials and things like that. But I see people saying, um, you know, the, for, the, for the CCS, the CCP, um, for the CPC, they say the CCP and I'm like, or, or PCC. And I'm like, what are y'all talking about? Like, are you, do you mean <laughs> the CPC? Oh yeah, that's what I meant. So let's get these letters <laughs> straight. Okay. Because again, you don't want to talk like, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. You need to make sure that you are informed. All right. You need to make sure that you are doing your research. These things are basic research. It is basic research. And the per to the person who was saying, oh, well, um, I'm taking the RHIT and, and somebody told me it's a state board exam. Who are you listening to? You know, you literally are, you had to have gone through an associate's degree program and you didn't know that until you get out. Something's wrong there. You know, you should know the second you get into that program, the RHIA or the RHIT program, right? Register health information. Well, hold on. The Health Information Technician Program for the Associates, the Health Information Management Program for the Bachelors, you are going to know, right, um, that at the end, this is what you're going to be sitting for. If your college is not talking it up, I would seriously be looking to make sure that they are approved through CAHIM, right, so that um, any of those CAHIM approved programs those are the ones that are going to allow you to be able to take those RHIA or the RHIT. If it is not, <laughs> then you are going to basically lose out and you have a very expensive piece of paper because of the simple fact that the program that you go through for college has to be approved through CAHIM. And I will leave the link for CAHIM in the description box below so that way you could put in your program name so that you can verify for yourself if that uh, particular college is uh, you know, health information program is going to be approved through them. So that way, at the end, you can sit for your RHIT or your RHIA. Okay, guys, it is very important that you arm yourself with your own ability to be able to do research and knowledge about these credentials. Otherwise, you're going to be taken advantage of really quickly by people who don't know, who talk a good game, and they're just saying, oh, yeah, you're going to be taking your state boards at the end really dude like state boards no because then people are confused thinking that if i move and i've gotten this question before too um i live in florida if i move to new york am i going to have to take the state board exam again for medical code i'm like what are you talking about there is no state board exam okay it is literally <laughs> a certification exam administered from the associations themselves okay either um oh well for the degree designation is going to be a hema but uh, with the medical coding, it's going to be AAPC or HEMA, you know, so it really all depends on where you're getting your certifications through. But yes, <laughs> when you are going through this whole process of, you know, figuring out what you want to do and things like that, if you're already in the degree program and you say, well, you know, it's too late, I've already, you know, I've already almost done with the program, and if I would have known this, I never would have gone this way. I would have just went with a medical coding certification. You didn't know, okay? You didn't know. And things happen for a reason. So go ahead and finish it up because you've already paid for it, or you're going to be paying for it with time, right? So you've already paid for it. Finish it up, and then um, start exploring which medical coding certification you want to. Now, again, I'm just recommending the CCS because it says that you've mastered inpatient and outpatient coding. It does not require you to have experience on the website, on the AHIMA website. It does say that it is recommended. A lot of people miss that word. They write me and they're hyperventilating saying, I don't have experience. What do I do? Guys, if you look on there, it says that it is recommended that you have experience only because it is a very detailed, very uh, information dense uh, test. It is four hours. It is roughly two minutes per question. And it's covered in two sections, right? There's a multiple choice and then there's your case studies. And guys, it is possible to study on your own to be able to take this medical coding credential, the CCS, 
and it is possible to be able to study on your own and pass that exam without having previous experience, right? It is possible. However, you do have to study very hard for it. The books that I recommend are in the description box below, and I recommend studying 20 hours per week. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have a full-time job, family, kids, farm, dogs, cats, whatever. <laughs> None of that matters because if you are truly serious about wanting to be a medical coder or being a, a good leader and understanding what you're doing and understanding your employees when they're speaking to you about like their concerns and their problems, understanding that language is key. Medical coding is its own language. We have our own rules <laughs> when it comes to these things. And you know, trying to make sure that everybody gets a, paid appropriately or the patients are being charged appropriately those things are key with medical coding, okay? It is, it is just literally the same thing that I tell my nurses who write to me insisting that they want to be a CDI, but they've never been a medical coder before. And I've even had one who said, well, um, what if I go through this certain boot camp? Is that going to make me look good uh, because I've been a, a nurse and I want to be a CDI now? Do you have any medical coding knowledge? Well, no. How can you want to do one without knowing the other, guys? You need to understand the coding before you get into uh, the CDI part. And it's the same thing if you're going to go into that leadership role. You need to understand what your people are going to be going through. You need to understand that language of coding so that you can be an effective leader. There's a lot of ineffective leaders out there in many different organizations and it causes a lot of financial strain and morale problems anywhere you go because people they don't arm themselves with knowledge and they're incompetent okay so you don't want to be in that category and the scary thing is <laughs> the scary thing is is that there's things like tiki talk and all these little little fast things that you know, people, oh yeah, you can learn this, you can learn this, and, and it's real quick, real quick bites, but they're not spending the time to develop with their knowledge. And shortening your attention span is dangerous, guys. It is. And what it does is it sets you up for failure because people are so hooked on these little um, quick bites and they're thinking that, you know, you can explain everything so quickly. Your brain has to have time to process and to be able to develop these things. That's why I say you have to take your time and learn it. You need 9 months, 12 months, or 18 months uh, to be able to learn medical coding. Now, for my folks that have their degree designations, you can probably cut that down to about 6 months um, still with steady studying um, for the coding portion of it, right? Because you've already established that you've gotten your... Uh, medical terminology, your anatomy, your pathophysiology, all of that has already been covered. Plus, your pharma is already covered in those degree programs. So you're just learning the coding. And yes, I still say you need at least six months. Typically, really, you would need nine months. Uh, but I don't want to hear people <laughs> hollering at me on email uh, because I typically do get that afterward. Oh, no. Okay, well, then you want to set yourself up for failure. You go right ahead. You know, because rushing into it and just barely passing, again, it's not a game plan. Okay, it's not a game plan. And it's not funny either. Because the thing is, when you're going out there and then you're going to be so confused and you're going to be lost, so then what are you doing there? You showing up to collect a check and go home? That's not right either, guys. That's not right either. So I want people to learn to develop your attention span. Get a longer attention span. Because having a shortened attention span and going through all these little TikTok things and thinking it's so so cool, that's not cool, guys. It's not. Because again, when your attention span gets shortened and shortened, then you're going to be able to accept anything that's thrown at you in front of you. But then you're not going to have time to process it. You're just going to go along with it because it's easier. And, it, and this industry is not easy. It is not and again, I don't say this to scare you. I say it to prepare you. And a lot of people say, well, you scared me. You scared me. Wouldn't you rather know the information beforehand rather than just jumping in and, and oh, yeah, it's this. It's, it's, it's so great and it's so easy. 
We have to know what doctors know. We'll never have gone to medical school. And the person that's sitting in that RHIA, RHIT spot, they're going to be looking to you. Your coders, if you are the leader, your coders are going to be looking to you to at least have some knowledge. And they will be able to, to get that. <laughs> they will be able to spot somebody who doesn't know really quickly. And that's not a good position for a leader to be in because that means that those coders can run right over you. And that's the last thing that you want to do because you as that leader with that degree designation are going to be the face of that department. And you do not want to have that hanging over your head. And especially if you are having to answer to all these other physicians that are in the hospital, hey, why are we not producing? Why are we not producing? And they're giving you all of these codes and all these procedures and talking to you about, you know, RVUs and all these things like that. And if you can't answer any of those things, oh, trust me, that's that's not a good day. <laughs> that is not a good day. So you want to make sure that you are prepared, especially if you want to step into a leadership role. And if you don't want to step into a leadership role, maybe you want to be a more of a teacher or, you know, a lead or something like that. Again, you're still going to have to have that knowledge. OK, and sometimes even when you're applying for these jobs and they say, well, yes, we want somebody who has a degree because they want somebody who is strong in medical terminology, anatomy, patho and pharma. Right. They want somebody who's strong in that because that's essential <laughs> to understanding what the what we're saying in this documentation, what these doctors are saying in this documentation, rather. And so because of that, you know, you want to make sure that, OK, I have that. But then they will also say, well, we would like you to get a medical coding certification in addition to so that we know that you are proficient with application of the codes. And that's the big difference right there. So. You know, with all that said, you know, make sure that you are taking this seriously. Make sure that you are um, doing your research, guys, and make sure that when you're speaking about medical coding, doesn't matter if you're in a Facebook group or, you know, wherever you are and make sure that when you speak, you speak after you've done your research so that way you're not running around repeating Things that don't even make sense. Like that person who told me about taking the RHIT and that she heard it from somebody saying that um, state boards, state boards. Really? You know what I mean? And then you come to my channel and you say that? No. <laughs> I corrected that right away because I was like, no, no, no. We're not, we're not going to perpetuate this ignorance of, oh, it's a state board exam. You got to take your state boards. You got to take your boards. Guys, no. That's for doctors, lawyers, and nurses, okay? <laughs> and other professions. Not us. We take a certification exam. I'm just saying. So with that said, guys, um, again, choose carefully. And, you know, again, if you are in, if you have your degree designation, it's okay. If you don't want to be a leader, that's okay. Um, you can always, you know, continue on with your medical coding certification if you want to. I wouldn't let, this is, um, this is what I'm going to say and I'll wrap it up. I would not let the RHIA or the RHIT lapse, even if you want to be a medical coder and maybe you get your certification in medical coding and then you go on to be a medical coder and maybe it's been two years. Do not let that RHIA or the RHIT lapse because if you do, you're going to have to take that exam again. Well, here's the thing. If you maintain that and all of a sudden you start developing really well as a medical coder and you say hey i want to be a lead or i want to be able to teach a class or i want to be able to you know teach providers or i want to do cdi that degree designation is going to help you so again don't don't let it go just because you say well i don't want to be a leader and i didn't know don't let it go you earned it okay so you keep it and then when the time is right, then you're like, okay, you know what? I want to move up. That RHIA or RHIT will help you. I'm just saying. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Best of luck to you. Uh, if this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.